Charlie Devil Green was a hell-raising light heavyweight who fought out of Harlem, New York, later making headlines for a murder spree that left three people dead. His date of birth remains a mystery as he was born in either Mississippi or Louisiana. He was taught to box by his father and joined the Marine Corps after a stint in college. He won the base boxing championship before being medically discharged for seizures and blackouts. Green then moved from the South to New York. He won the New York Golden Gloves Sub-Novice Championship in the light heavyweight division before turning pro in 1966. He lost his debut, but later went on to upset contender Frankie DePaula with a second round knockout. Green was erratic throughout his career, losing to Jimmy Dupree, Angel Oquendo, and Chuck Leslie before coming in as a last minute substitute to face Jose Torres. Torres was a former light heavyweight champion on the comeback trail after a year out of the sport. Torres's original opponent bailed at the last minute and matchmaker Teddy Brenner was desperate to find a replacement. He spotted Charlie Green in the crowd with a hot dog and beer in hand. The fighter claimed that he had just come from a craps game where he lost all of his money. Brenner offered him over three grand for the fight, which Green agreed to, but only if Brenner spotted him extra cash for his ticket and the beer. Admittedly, having smoked marijuana before entering the arena, Green shocked Torres by flooring him at the end of the first round. Referee Johnny Lobianco was confused, thinking he had heard the bell, and he turned to the timekeeper for confirmation. Torres's quick-thinking cornerman jumped into the ring and pulled the fallen former champion back to his corner. Torres was still dazed as the second round began, falling to the canvas without being hit. But he arose and crashed a big right hand to Green's jaw, knocking him out. Green's near upset of Torres aside, boxing wasn't his main priority even though he bragged that he was the best light heavyweight in the world. He worked as a bouncer and later a manager of the popular disco called Dom in Greenwich Village. I manage two nightclubs, Green said. I have two wives, but I won't let either of them come to the clubs. I make my real money gambling. After the Torres fight, Green went on an unexpected win streak. He gained a revenge victory over Angel Oquendo before decisioning longtime veteran Henry Hank over 10 rounds. The victory earned him a shot at the number three ranked light heavyweight contender, Ray Anderson. Green shocked the highly ranked contender, knocking him out in the first round with two chopping right hands. I may be the world's worst boxer, Green said, but I also may be the world's greatest puncher. Now managed by Gil Clancy, Green signed to face a comebacking Floyd Patterson. The former heavyweight champion had been out of the ring for over two years and picked Green to be his first opponent. Green was a surly character who badmouthed Patterson ahead of their bout. He called Patterson a lapdog who wanted sympathy from the public every time he lost the fight. That's why he's so popular, Green said. Everybody feels sorry for him. Now, ain't that a hell of a way to go through life? And the count continues at the bell. And how Floyd can keep from laughing at those trunks of Charlie Devil Green, I don't know. Anyway, the boys are in action. Patterson in the black trunks, Green in the white trunks with the red stripes and the ornations. Chopping at Patterson, who was not knocked down. He was pushed down. There was no knockdown. Both a little gun shy at the moment. Madison's haymaker, Wild. The left hook was good. A minute to go in round two. Lloyd is definitely trying to end it right now. I would have thought that Green uh, would come out winging to the head with both hands, but. Now he's starting to throw them. And now the fight gets hot. A minute to go and Green felt that punch. 
Patterson is putting a lot into those body punches. Seconds to go in round three. Ten seconds to go in round four. rocked Patterson he slightly rocked him anyway near the bell and uh, apparently they didn't hear the bell and they started a pretty good battle after it as good a, as they had during the round which was good enough by itself there's the blood again the cut is angry looking now whether it, it could affect the bout we're trying to get in close so you can see it it's an angry looking cut Addison, those hard punches on green. A pretty good exchange. That's the way they yelled in his fight with Shivalo, but green felt him a few. And Patterson has to hold on. Again, it turns into a Donnybrook. Referee warns Green again. Ten seconds to go in round seven. Regardless of how this fight turns out, Patterson hurt Green there, and Charlie went in and held on. He's saying regardless of how this turns out, Patterson's going to be out of action because of that eye for quite a while. It's an angry gash. Let's see if they call this a knockdown. No knockdown. No knockdown. Patterson, as usual, tried to help his opponent to his feet. Some of the crowd thought it was a knockdown. The referee said no. But there were good shots scored by Patterson. And he's scoring again. Vicious right hand with a minute to go. And Green comes battling back. Green is still very much in the fight. They're in Patterson's corner. No 
Well, there won't be many better rounds than this one. Ten seconds to go in round eight. Between rounds, Milt Gross of the New York Post asked the referee if it were a knockdown. It wasn't. This is round nine, and this is Don Dunphy at ringside, and Green is won for hitting on the break, and he's mad. Some good licks with two minutes to go. We'll have an interview with the winner after the fight. Tenth and final round. Tony Perez, the referee, had them touch gloves. Green on the left and the white trunks. Patterson on the right with the black. No knockdowns, which is a surprise. A couple of punchers in there. Those are solid jabs. Patterson ran into a right and countered with a better right hand of his own to the jaw. Patterson for the last five or six rounds has been bothered by a cut near the left eye. But he's still going strong. Green returned to the nightclub scene after the bout and began a drug habit which quickly consumed his life. He returned to the ring two and a half years after the Patterson defeat, now a shell of his former self. But he still enjoyed badmouthing his opponents whenever the opportunity arose. Before a bout with Larry Holmes, Green told the future heavyweight champion that he had no heart. I knocked him out in one round, Holmes said. Case closed, Charlie Green. After suffering eight straight defeats, Green became employed as a sparring partner for contender Jean-Pierre Koopman. He served as a cornerman for Koopman's failed title challenge of Ali, hollering, we'll get him next time, we'll get him next time, after Koopman was stopped in the fifth. Three years later, Green was arrested for robbing a bank, but a lenient judge gave him probation. He found work as a recreation director on Rikers Island, but his drug addiction had now completely taken over his life. In September of 1983, he entered a cocaine den with a free base pipe in one hand and a gun in the other. You are all going to die in here tonight, Green told the occupants as he began firing, killing three and wounding two. Green then ran from the scene and was later discovered dangling from the 15th floor window of his attorney's office, threatening to jump. The cocaine snorting half-naked Green was apprehended and remained adamant that he was not the perpetrator of the killings. His attorney tried an insanity defense to no avail, as Green was sentenced to 45 years to life at a maximum security prison in New York. In November 2014, Green died in prison from prostate cancer. He was estimated to be in his early to mid-70s. <laughs> 